my channel. So for today's video, it is a long awaited fall enclosure clean for blue. So for any of you who are familiar with my channel, every spring and fall, I do 100% enclosure cleans on all of my pets. And I did Koa's for his fall thing a few weeks ago. I have that video on my channel if you haven't seen it. And now it's time for blue. October is right around the corner. So obviously in the next couple months, he's gonna be going into a brumation state. So I wanna make sure that his substrate is 100% clean before he goes into brumation for the winter. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing a 100% clean out of blue's enclosure. Throughout the year, obviously, I always spot clean every single day. I take out old food, poopies, anything that I see. But it is good to do a full clean about twice a year is what I do for my animals. Some people may do more or less. But if you have a really large enclosure like I do for your tortoise, they really aren't that messy other than poopies, which are very obvious and easy to clean. And then their food that you will have to clean up and spot clean. They really don't make that big of messes. So I find that twice a year works perfectly. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, yeah, so I have a bowl of warm water here that we're about to put blue in because we are going to give him a little soak while we clean out his enclosure. Obviously soaking tortoises is a must because it is a great way to hydrate them and it is definitely a must for babies. You gotta soak babies a lot more than adults, but, but it's still a good practice to soak adults as well. I soak blue two to three times a week usually, but he does have a water dish in his enclosure that he has access to 24 seven, so no worries on dehydration. Here is little Boo, he's doing so wonderful. So for those of you who have been begging to see Blue and who have missed him, here he is. I'm gonna put him in his bowl to soak before he pee pees on me, but there he is, precious as ever. I know you guys have missed him, so here he is. I'm gonna go on and put him in his water dish so he can soak and we'll get started. You're so pretty, I love you. You're such a good boy, I love you. So there he is in his warm water. We're gonna let him soak and we're gonna get started. All right, so I'm gonna do my best with this angle to let you guys watch me clean this. It's kind of hard because um, my tripod only goes so tall and I do have a bag of Eco Earth holding this extremely heavy door open. Um, we're just gonna go with that for now. So let me move this so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Honestly, that's probably gonna be about the best I can do. And you probably won't be able to see much of me because I want you guys to see the enclosure. And there's Milo barking again. I knew that was gonna happen. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take out his water bowl. Now, I did actually rinse this out and fill it yesterday, but we're gonna go on and clean it out and refill it again, because fresh water is important. Blue is literally just chilling in his water bowl. He's so funny. He's probably like, this feels so good, because he loves when it's warm. It's warm water, he loves just soaking in it. All right, we're gonna take out his leaves. People have asked in the past why I don't put tons and tons of foliage and logs and things in here. So tortoises actually really benefit from open space. That's why he has an enclosure that is five feet long. Tortoises need a lot of room because they are very active or they're supposed to be. If they're healthy, they're really active. Um, so Blue loves to run around and climb and do things in his enclosure all day long. They'll just walk around in their enclosures and it's really important that they have lots of room to do so. Also, you wanna make sure you never have anything in your enclosure that's tall that your tortoise could get on top of and then flip over on its back because tortoises can perish that way. Perish. They can pass away that way. So it's really important that you're careful not to have anything too tall. Now, Blue does have a log, but it's not tall enough to where if he were to climb over it that he would flip or anything. I've never had an issue with that out of him. Um, so he does have one log hide plus his big hide on the end. So he technically has two hides, one that is in the big part of the enclosure and then he has the bottom portion which i'll show you guys later that is the hide that's on the end that is built into the enclosure and then i do have his foliage in here you know just to give him something to look at something a little different but for the most part i like to keep it very open so that he doesn't have any issues with flipping over or anything like that we have his slate it's got calcium powder all over it from yesterday so i'm gonna go rinse this off really good too we are going to start emptying the substrate out of here now I may fast forward this part because it honestly takes a very long time and it's kind of rolling. So I'm basically just gonna scoop this out and dump it into the trash can. It's interesting how you can see whenever you remove the top layer of the Repti bark, you can see the moisture underneath it. It's like microclimates because sometimes your enclosure may look dry on the surface because I do miss down Blue's enclosure because you want to have like microclimates, you know, like pockets of moisture here and there, especially like around the water dish and stuff. But obviously it's going to be really dry under where he basks because his heat lamp gets hot. 
Um, but that's really important to prevent pyramiding in tortoises um, or respiratory infections. You wanna make sure that there is moisture underlying in your tortoise's enclosure. So I like to see that there's moisture underneath the top layer of his enclosure that's really good. going to empty this to the best of my ability. It's not going to be 100%, but we're going to get at least like 98% of the substrate out of here so we can do a full refresh. All right, so the big part is now empty the best I could get it. Now we're going to do his little hide part. So you can see it's just like a, a little hideaway for him. So we're going to go on and clean this out now. I have four bags of this, but I think I might only need three. I believe that's how many I normally use. So we'll see. And these are the big 24 quart bags. It's the biggest bag you can buy. So we're gonna go on and dump some of that into this side. See? can see right, that's one bag I think two more bags will be good big Recti Bark bags. Oh my God, that's good. That's a lot. I love fresh Recti Bark. Oh. Yeah, this looks really good. I'm so happy this is gonna be clean for fall. We're gonna mist it down a little bit before we put in his clean water bowl. I'm gonna sit his water bowl right here. We have his log hide. You guys can kind of see. All right, here is Blue's clean slate with some romaine. This has romaine and spring mix on here. I would normally give him some hibiscus flowers and dandelion greens and things like that, but it is storming outside today. And also I have no hibiscus blooms. I haven't had a new hibiscus bloom since last week, but he did get two last week. So romaine and spring mix it is for today. So far it's looking really, really good. All right, baby boo. There you go in your clean enclosure. You can eat, you can do whatever you want. You got clean water. It's all clean now for you. Oh boy. You gonna eat some of your greens? I knew you'd probably go for those. Is it good? All right, guys, that is it for today's video of cleaning blue my Herman's tortoise's enclosure. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Be kind. Bye.